everybody. I'm McGruff, the crime dog. Welcome to 31 Days of Horror with B-Movie Euphoria. House of the Dead, The House of the Dead, is the worst anthology horror movie ever made. So the wraparound story in The House of the Dead, a.k.a. Alien Zone. Why is it called Alien Zone? There aren't any aliens in this movie. The wraparound story is about a guy named Talmadge who is having sex with a lady. And during the sex, she turns to him and says, I hope your wife doesn't find out or some bullshit like that. Sometimes I feel sorry for your wife. Kids, if you're thinking of doing this, cheating on your wife, and maybe doing drugs or alcohol, think again. So he leaves his woman that he's sleeping with. He gets caught in the rain, and he's walking around this city, but he can't get anywhere, and the rain is horrible, and everywhere he goes, people either shut the door on him or treat him like garbage. Could you tell me where the Ambassador Hotel is? I thought it was on this block, uh, block over. See, the cab left me off, and I don't recognize... He finds some shelter under this roof, which so happens to be the roof of a mortuary. And the mortician comes out and says, Hey, guy, come on in. No need to stand out of his friend. Why not warm up a little? Try out. So the mortician guy is really creepy, of course, because all morticians are creepy, and they probably do drugs. He invites him inside, and then he says, why don't you come downstairs and look at some caskets? Yeah, that sounds great. Let's go look at the caskets. That sounds wonderful. Thanks a lot. Well, I was kind enough to bring you in out of the rain, give you a hot cup of coffee. Why not stay just a few more minutes and let me show you around? And as you do, he opens each one and tells a story about each dead body that's in each casket. Because that's a great thing to do on a nice, rainy, stormy night. This guy, who's definitely freaked out, is being told each story one by one. And the first story is about a woman, a teacher named Miss Sibbler. And this is about the stupidest story in this long line of stupid stories. This teacher, Mrs. Sibbler, is a complete asshole to kids. But we don't really see that. We just see her walking away from school and her thoughts about, oh, these kids, I hate these kids. Why did you become a teacher if you hate kids? <laughs> Hi, Miss Sibler. Hi, Miss Sibler. Isn't she sweet? Right. She takes a shower, and this actress is doing so much mouth work in this movie. It is insane. If you watch this movie, which is available on YouTube and Tubi and some other stuff, but if you watch this movie, watch this actress's mouth. Because she's doing a lot of ooh, and ooh, and ooh. <laughs> So she's taking a shower, and the radio comes on by itself, and some other creepy stuff happens, and she sees a silhouette in the shower curtain, and she's getting freaked out, but she doesn't know what's happening. It's probably because she's doing drugs. Remember, kids, if you do drugs, you're probably going to see some weird stuff. She gets out to her kitchen, and some kids come out, and they're all wearing those really cheap Halloween masks that break the first time you use them and you can't breathe through. So all these kids, they come in her kitchen and she's like, get out of my kitchen. Uh-oh. They take off their masks and they have sharp, gooey teeth. And it's disgusting. And then they all move toward her and I guess they eat her. And that's the end of the story. Wow. Anyway, we go back to the mortuary and the creepy mortician is like, yep, and I guess she got eaten. How does he know that? How does he know that he got eaten by evil kids? 
The next story is about a guy named Grouski. And the whole, this whole short is like set up on one camera that's pointed at a living room. And the whole story is about this guy who set up this camera so he could murder women on camera in his living room. This whole story is him just inviting women back to his place and then murdering them in different ways. Abra. Wait, okay. Ka. Abra. <laughs> Every once in a while, there'll be a flash of him being taken away by the cops and reporters asking him why he did it. <laughs> but it's all pretty plain, and we just get to see like three women get murdered, and it's not that great. And the twist at the end, what the mortician says at the very end is, he died in the electric chair, but there were no cameras filming, and he died screaming, please film me! Uh, the next story, which is not a horror story at all, it's just a story about two detectives. One that's kind of Columbo-like and American, and one that comes from the UK and has a Poirot mustache, and his name is Inspector McDowell. The American inspector is named Dr. Malcolm Tolliver. So it's about these two detectives that are super good and Sherlock Holmes smart, but somehow they hate each other because all they're trying to do is trying to figure out the perfect way to kill the other, and in the end they both kill each other, and it's stupid! It's the dumbest story, and I know that I said the first story was the dumbest, but this one is definitely the dumbest. That's why no one could possibly suspect me of killing you. I forgot to tell you. I solved the case. Two days ago. <laughs> the next story, the fourth and final story, not counting the wraparound story, is about a guy named Cantwell who works at an office and is just generally kind of a jerk. I don't really know how he's a jerk because the short doesn't do a good job of showing how he's a jerk. Basically, a girl at his office tries to make some moves on him. He's like, thank you, I don't need anything. And I guess that's the movie telling you he's a dickhead. Also, he doesn't give money to a homeless man right outside his office. So what happens to him, he goes into this store, which he thinks is open, but is actually abandoned. And then he falls into an abandoned elevator shaft. And then for days, it seems like, he is put in a torture room where there are a wall of needles that come at him, and then he's squeezed really hard, and then he's just locked up in this room for days, like old boy. All he's given are bottles of liquor, and they're just rolled to him, and then the door closes. And eventually, we see he grows a beard, and he's really depressed, and all he's doing is drinking. And then finally, the door opens, and he's all messed up and drunk, and he tries to get somebody to help him, and they're like, No, get out of here, you drunk! Wow, the irony! Oh, oh, oh! It's really, really bad. <laughs> it goes back to the mortician, and he says, He died alone in a gutter with a rotten liver. Why? Because he was rude, kind of? Because he didn't give a homeless guy some money? It was just that terrible saw logic, which says, if you're kind of a dickhead, you should probably be tortured to death. It goes back to the mortuary, where the mortician is creepier than ever, and finally he opens one last casket, and oh my god, it's empty! This is all very interesting. It's the casket for Talmadge, 
and he's going to die, but he doesn't know how. So he gets freaked out and he runs out of the mortuary. Oh, but I'm not going to ruin the ending, even though this is the worst anthology movie I have ever seen. And I've seen it all, kids. I've seen crack. I've seen smack. I've seen uppers and downers and shitters and farters. I'm McGruff. And remember, if anyone tries to offer you candy on Halloween, take that shit. Happy Halloween, everybody. And thank you for watching 31 Days of Horror with B-Movie Euphoria. Mm -hmm.